In this session, we will talk about bootstrapping authentication and recovery from, from failure in authentication systems. So, uh, first of all, we are going to talk about what bootstrapping is. And then we are going to talk about some problems with bootstrapping authentication and some problems with recovery from failures. Uh, and uh, finally, we are going to talk about uh, giving the problem to someone else, which is a, a more and more common uh, strategy for this. Now, bootstrapping uh, is basically a chicken and egg problem. Uh, Alice is not registered in our authentication system and we want to register her as a user. Now, how do we know that Alice is actually Alice? Because the purpose of our uh, authentication system is to authenticate Alice as Alice and since she's not in, then we don't have anything to authenticate her. So think a bit about possible workarounds that comes to mind. When is this a problem and when is it not a problem? Now one possible solution is that we simply don't care who Alice is. So that means that we simply set up authentication when Alice creates uh, her account and then we can authenticate whoever set up the account. We simply don't care that Alice is Alice. We just care that it's the same person coming back uh, for uh, later sessions. Now in this particular uh, scenario, the attribute is ownership. So not a particular uh, physical identity. So the identity is the owner. And uh, this is of course the solution that you are most familiar with uh, from a lot of web services uh, around the web. Now the second, uh, in the second case, uh, we actually do care who Alice is. Now here we can, require ID checks and uh, similar measures to set up the authentication mechanisms uh, using, for instance, a help desk. Now, if we have uh, the address of the person, then we can simply send the credentials through mail, uh, either if it's snail mail or email. Well, email isn't particularly secure, but uh, neither is uh, snail mail. And here the attribute is actually Alice's real identity. And uh, the ID checks that we do, uh, they trust the issuer. Uh, so we, we simply need to trust the issuer for the ID checks to work. Uh, so we need to trust someone else here. And uh, sending stuff through mail, well that uh, trusts the mail service. Uh, to actually deliver the mail. And uh, it also trusts the, the source for, for, for the address to, this, uh, to Alice. Now, think about uh, this bootstrapping problem for a bit. How is Alice authenticated when she applies for an ID? You have probably gone through this process uh, yourself, uh, well, at least once. So think about how it was, uh, particularly the first time you did it. Now, other examples of uh, authentication, uh, bootstrapping authentication is, for instance, apps like Signal and WhatsApp. Uh, hopefully you you're familiar with uh, at least one of those apps uh, but there are there are various apps for smartphones uh, which uh, use uh, the phone number uh, as the identifiers it relies on ownership of a phone number mostly a mobile phone number and uh, they simply send a text message 
with a code to verify the ownership of the phone number. Now this uh, particular example assumes a trustworthy phone infrastructure and a trustworthy phone operator because uh, basically the phone operator can impersonate anyone in the system since they can intercept text messages and read them and uh, potentially uh, a government can also impersonate because they might be able to force the phone provider in this case. Now, another aspect of this, uh, which is very, very related, is uh, when you have set this up and then the, the person loses their authentication tokens. So how to recover from this failure? So for instance, uh, you do sign up for a Google account, for instance, if you want uh, Gmail or Facebook, if you want Facebook, and now you, have, you set up a password and uh, use that for, for logging in, and maybe you just changed your password and then simply forgot it. And uh, how do you do to, to recover there? Uh, because the password was the only thing that Google or Facebook had to, uh, to authenticate you. And now you've lost that one, so you're locked out of your account. And the recovery from failure is about uh, this process. And uh, it's a quite important uh, part of uh, setting up and uh, bootstrapping authentication. Uh, because you will end up in this situation, so you want to have a process for it. Now, uh, sometimes this is a continuous process. So for instance, in some, some cases, you can use the same bootstrapping procedure uh, to recover from failure. So for instance, if you're registered in the help desk, so your identity is important, then you can simply use your ID card and go to help desk again and say, hey, I forgot my password. Can you please reset it for me? And this will work. So basically that's uh, the same procedure as uh, for setting up the account in the beginning. Uh, however, that won't work for uh, the Google and Facebook examples that I just gave. Uh, in those cases, they usually register uh, an email address uh, to some system and then they use that one as uh, or to, to recover if you ever forget your password because then they assume that you at least remember the password for that email and it's only you who has access to it. So you can do it do the password recovery. Now, so it's very important that the system can handle forgotten, lost or aged or authentication means. Yeah, so uh, it's a very important aspect of the authentication uh, part. Now, uh, we've already uh, entered this area a bit. Uh, so one idea is to simply solve this problem by giving it to someone else, because uh, a lot of, uh, there exists a lot of system uh, systems which need to do authentication and uh, most likely some of them have already solved our problem so why not let them solve the problem for us too and uh, there are some aspects of this so this makes it easier for the user uh, there there is uh, fewer passwords to remember you just need to uh, make sure that yeah, you have uh, you enter your password into this one very reliable service and nowhere else. And uh, the downside of this is, of course, that uh, that particular provider will be an attractive target if uh, that provider provides this service to a lot of different uh, places. Because if you get access to that one, then you get all the accounts at the same time. And uh, finally, of course, we must trust them to do it properly because uh, we rely on them. So if they don't do it properly, then that means that our system will not have proper authentication either. 
So uh, an example of uh, how this is usually implemented in practice, if we don't care who Alice is, then we can use uh, Google or Facebook, for instance. You probably use that in some services where you log in using Google or Facebook instead of creating a new user account with a new password. You simply tell them your uh, Google uh, username and then they forward you to Google to log in and Google uh, returns an authentication token uh, to the service. Uh, if we do care who Alice is, so we care about the identity, then we can use electronic IDs, for instance, bank ID in Sweden. Uh, so probably most of you are familiar with that one. And uh, most, if not all, government services use that one. And a lot of other uh, Swedish services relies on that one now, so you don't have to create a uh, user, user account with a username and password. You simply uh, use bank ID instead. And uh, as we pointed out before, this third party that we rely on must do the bootstrapping as rigorously as we would have. So, for instance, if we want to rely on bank ID, yeah, we need to trust uh, the bank ID system to have done proper ID checks uh, at, uh, when, when they issue these credentials. And that was everything for this time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>